Hi everyone, it's Vicky here and today I have a very striking card for you. I am going to use Distress Oxide inks as well as Sizzix dyes. So I will be working with the Cityscape Skyline dyes. These are by Sizzix and they come in this uh, very handy plastic uh, envelope so that you, that you can store them easily. Now you can cut them out both and uh, stack one on top of the other for a beautiful dimension on your card. But first I need to create my night sky so that I can stick my skyline on top. So first of all I am going to cut out a rectangle and I am using my Big Shot machine for that. By the way I am using mixed media paper by Ranger and I am using this specific cardstock because it takes uh, distress oxide inks beautifully and you can spray a lot with water and it's not going to peel. So now that I have my rectangle ready this is where I am going to create my background, my night sky. I will be working on my craft mat. I am uh, bringing out my two Distress Oxide inks. I am going to use uh, my blending tools later on and I also need some water in a spray bottle. I will be working with uh, violet and uh, faded jeans. So first I am going to smooth some of this ink directly on top of my craft mat. I am going to spray with water until I see little bubbles forming on top of my, of my mat and now I'm going to go over it with my paper. I'm not going to fuss a lot about uh, the first layer, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, heat set it. I repeated this process twice and this is uh, what I got. Now that I have this beautiful texture going on at my background, I am going to darken up my sky a little bit. So on this stage I'm going to use only faded jeans without introducing violet again. So I'm going to place my paper on top. And now again I'm going to use my heat gun and dry this layer. Now you need to remember to dry one layer before you add a second one because this really makes a big difference. And now that I have all that texture on my panel, I am going to darken it up and this way I will go straight on my paper with Distress Oxide inks and uh, my blending tool. So I am darkening up my areas and although it looks as if I am actually covering up what's underneath, when you take a closer look to this panel you will be able to see all that is going on there. Now, of course, when I am finished with uh, applying my color, I'm going to spray a couple of times, which is going to activate the ink and it's going to give that beautiful chalk finish oxidized look. I'm going to heat set that and now just to darken it up a little bit more, I'm going to add some black suit. Now in the Distress Oxide Inks uh, line, there is not a black ink yet and I hopefully we will get um, a black one in uh, the next release. So I am going to darken up the edges and just by darkening up the edges I already have a beautiful sky there. Now to make this background even more interesting I am going to do some stenciling just because I love it. Now you don't really need to do that. And today I'm going for a more masculine looking card but uh, definitely you can give this card to a girl as well. The alphabet stencil that I am using is from the latest release by Tim Holtz from his latest collection of uh, stencils and I'm going over it with my blending tool and some black suit. So I'm happy with how my sky is looking and all I need to do is to add some stars. For that I'm going to add a little bit of gesso. So I added a blob there, I am going to dilute it with water just to make it more runny and I am going to use a very thin brush. The thinner the brush, the thinner the splashes. And I am going to apply some splashes all over there. Now just because gesso is diluted with water, the water when it touches my paper is going to react with uh, whatever is underneath. So this is going to make sure that my white splashes not, are not as vibrant as you would expect and um, it's going to blend nicely with everything that is going on there. Now that my sky is ready, I'm going to cut out my buildings, so I'm going to cut both of them. I am using a black cardstock to do so, and I'm going to run them through my Big Shot machine. And now that I have my buildings cut out, I'm going to make sure that I poke out all those tiny little pieces from the windows. 
In order to have all those windows light up, I decided to cut out those two building ties out of uh, gold cardstock. So this is where I have already cut it out and um, just to make sure that uh, all those uh, windows are not going to make holes, before I popped out the die cut, I am making sure that I stick those windows at the back. So I'm just using some tape there, making sure that all those windows will stay put. And now I am ready to pop out my die cut. And you will see that all the windows will stay in place. This way when I place the black buildings on top of the gold ones, you will see gold coming through all those windows. And the idea is to place the black building on top of the gold and you see how the light comes through. Now I'm going to show you magic here. I'm going to offset them a little bit and you see how dimensional they become, as if they are lighted by the moon which I think is just beautiful. It's a great effect for a card. And by offsetting it right or left, you actually change the position of the moon up at the sky. I am going to stick uh, one on top of the other now. For that, I am using my Nouveau glue pen. And this is uh, the Nouveau glue pen with the large tip. And uh, I'm going to make sure that I offset a little bit. And I'm going to repeat the same process for the other buildings. And as I'm doing that, just to remind you that you can find the full list of all the supplies that I'm using today down below in the description area as well as on my blog. And I am linking to multiple online shops so that you can choose your favorite and check the prices. But also I am making sure to link to European online shops for my European audience. So make sure to check the links down below. Now it's time to assemble my card, so I'm going to place one skyline on top of the other. For that I'm using some foam tape at the back. This is going to add some beautiful dimension, which is much needed when you stick uh, those uh, buildings one on top of the other. And all I'm doing now is just using my scissors to cut out uh, little pieces, making sure that I pack up everything. Now I'm going to peel off uh, the tape and stick that at the very bottom of my panel. So this is going to be the first layer and now I'm going to repeat the same process with the second uh, row of buildings. Of course I'm going to use my scissors to cut out the excess. Now it's time to add the sentiment and for that I am going to use this set of dies by Sizzix. This uh, is designed by Tim Holtz and it is packed with uh, words. Now you can combine different ones to create your own phrases and I will go with best of luck. So I'm just going to look for uh, those three dies here. And I am using the grid on my table just to make sure that I align them correctly, they are all nice and straight. And just to hold them as they are, I am going to use some washi tape to tape over them. This is going to make sure that I have everything straight, all three ties in a row. I am also making sure that this is low tack by sticking it on top of uh, my hand, just to make sure that I will not ruin my beautiful uh, card now. And um, the truth is that I did uh, stack one next to the other to close, so you will see that when I cut it out, you, they don't have enough space in between the words. But if you recreate the card, make sure that you add uh, those uh, dies just a tiny little bit further away. So I'm going to bring in my big suit here and this is where I realize that I have all that uh, dimension on my card that I don't want to flatten up. So the truth is that I managed to save that just because that ties are only at the top. So I'm going to run only the top and go back again. And uh, I made sure that I didn't make a mess out of that. Now if you recreate the card, here's another tip. Make sure that you cut out the dies the sentiments before you go ahead and stick uh, the buildings on top. 
Now very carefully I'm peeling off my washi tape and I was lucky that I didn't ruin my panel there and you will see the beautiful effect when I remove those dies. I'm going to make sure that all the letters are popped out and I'm going to back this with uh, gold paper just like uh, I did for the buildings and it's going to give a beautiful effect. I used my 8G gun to add my tape adhesive at the back all around the sentiment and I have already cut out a thin strip of that uh, gold cardstock that I'm going to stick on top with making sure that I cover up all those letters so when I turn the panel on the other side I get this beautiful effect and you see that uh, the words are really too close to each other, just make sure that uh, if you recreate this card, you leave just a tiny little space in between. And the truth is that I don't really mind. If it did bother me a lot, I would uh, make this card again, but I think it's still such a beautiful card and it's really striking. I am adding some uh, tape adhesive at the back of my panel and I'm going to stick it directly on top of my card base. Now my card base is made out of uh, black cardstock and that's a um, standard card that's four and a quarter by five and a half. The panel is slightly smaller, so this gives me a beautiful black border all around. And that was the card for today. I hope you had fun and got inspired. And if you did, don't forget to leave me a comment as well as give me a thumbs up on my YouTube channel. Here are some close-up photos of the card that I made today. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you need more inspiration, you can click any of those videos on your screen right now. Thank you all for watching!